Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amudan Shaktivel, and in this video, we are going to see about triggers. Triggers are pretty cool topics in in, in GitHub Actions. This is pre predominantly the necessary one uh, that uh, we normally have to use in all the workflows. At least we need to have one trigger to basically trigger our workflow, right? So basically, uh, workflow triggers are events that causes the workflows to run. For example, let's say in automation. Uh, we want to run our test every night. So we can have a trigger based on cron job. So cron job is a trigger event, right? That, that triggers your workflow. Similarly, there are different ways that you could trigger a workflow. You, can, you could trigger it on push to a particular branch. You could trigger it on whenever people raise a PR, you want to trigger a workflow, you can also do that. So there are a lot of ways how you can trigger a workflow. So that's what we are going to see in in depth in this particular video right so uh before that uh i'll also tell you like where to go and create this right this whole thing right uh they all reside within the github itself let's say this is a project that i am interested in and i want to set up a cacd pipeline for this then uh go to the actions tab here uh you may not see the list that you are seeing here in your in your case because you might not have an workflow there but you can create it yourself it's pretty simple right once you click on new workflow, this basically gives you a templates, a lot of available templates that you can like based on the project. It suggested me like, you know, maybe use this. You want to build and test a Java project with Apache Maven. Like you want to deploy to Amazon ECS. You know, you can use all that, right? Uh, but let's say you want to create your own stuff because you don't need them now. And you want to set up your own workflow. Just click on this. And this will take you to the page uh, where you get an option to create a workflow file. Again, guys, when I say workflow, that's how your your CA is going to behave, right? So, so this basically going to create a file inside the dot GitHub workflows, and the file name is something that you can choose. For example, if you want to create a nightly run for your automated test, you can create a nightly test, whatever whatever some the very good name and conversion that you want to give, right? And you can give the name of the CA. I and mean, whatever that is mentioned in the cache is, is basically a comment in YAML, uh, you know, your uh, GitHub YAML file, right? So you can give a name for this. So maybe you can give a nightly run workflow, whatever. This is the name of this particular workflow, right? So you can give it. But apart from that, the, the main thing that we are speak, going to speak here is the on here. So this going to control when this workflow will run. So they have given you hints on how you know this is going to behave. So triggers the workflow on push or pull requests that by only for the master branch. Whenever there is a push happening to the master branch, or whenever a pull request created against the market ma master branch, then this workflow for going to trigger. Is this what we have, Amudan? No, we have more than this. But this is the place where you can create your YAML file. But yeah, also you can you can go to your uh, favorite IDEs and you can go to the dot GitHub folder. Uh, if you don't have, you can create one yourself. Go to create dot GitHub workflows and then you can create the YAML file yourself. You can go here and create a file yourself. Right. So already I have a file and we will uh, see this one. Right. So this is a unit test uh, workflow. And when I want to trigger this, hey, Amazon, I don't know what are the other option available. You spoke about push. And pull request. What are the other options? It's very easy. You just press uh, the control and and space in your in your keyboard, and it populates with all the options it has. Right. So it, there are so many things here. Whenever a pull request review is happening, whenever a registry package, whenever you want to release something, um, whenever the release is happening, whenever status, watch, workflow run, whenever you want to run it, there are a lot of options here. When somebody forks your repository, you want to run it. When you when there is a deployment that is happening, when you create something, so you, for all these you can you can you know basically trigger an workflow, and then whenever somebody sets a branch protection rule, let's say you protection protected your main branch uh, from directly committing from people from directly committing to the main branch, you are setting up that rule. When somebody is setting up that rule, you want to trigger a workflow. Right? Your, your your triggers can be anything, but the commonly used triggers is what I put here. So first push to main branch. So when I say branches, you can only run it 
it it will only run when it sees the list of these branches okay um for example this push whenever you push something to a main branch or a branch that's having uh, the branch name as releases slash again this is wild card which means it can be one it can be two it can be 2.2 2.3 whatever but if, whenever it is starting with release a slash it will run there and you can also ignore branches okay However, how do you find out all this like after clicking on push if you say again control and space you get different options paths paths ignore tags tags ignore. But these are all pretty not very common things that we normally use but there are other options as well uh, but importantly when you want to push whenever there is a push happening to the main branch you can do it okay and you can also uh, ignore the workflow to run whenever there is a push happening to develop branch you won't you don't want to run when there is a push happening to develop right so again you there is it makes no sense to use both of them at one place but i i just given this for a demo purpose right so you can also ignore uh, certain branches it's not just you can only denote the branch that you want to run and second one is whenever you want to create a pull request again guys notice the intention uh, intentation here so this and this lies in the same indentation and then this one is is four four intent away from your push so the indentations are pretty important here so please make a note of them right and then whenever there is a pull request that is happening and there can be different types of whenever a pull request opened or synchronized then you want to run it what are the other options press control and space when when somebody labels your pull request and somebody assigns a pull request when some, some pull request is closed logged open review requested all these things you can run for it right and what else whenever there is an uh, issue type let's say in in you know github action there is a uh, tab called as issues and uh, in this issue we can go and create a new issue for this repository right whenever somebody is creating an issue for this whenever an issue is opened you want to basically uh, trigger this workflow also when you when somebody is labeling that issue you can also uh, trigger that workflow but apart from that the main important one is workflow dispatch okay this workflow dispatch indicates uh, that you get an option to basically trigger it manually not just automatically by these means but also you get an option to trigger it manually so if we go to the actions tab again let's go to the uh, run web test and if you notice the run workflow here is coming this is coming because this is having a, a so if i go to the web test yaml file if you notice there is a workflow dispatch thing that is mentioned so this workflow will only run when there is a push happening to the main branch or when the, uh, you manually trigger it so that's the two ways it, you can trigger this workflow right so that that's how easy it is but apart from that you can also have other ways to trigger it for example uh, if you want to run it every night and then you just mention on schedule so you want to schedule it when you want to schedule it so the cron here indicates um uh, on uh any uh <clears throat> so uh this is like 10 pm uh and then uh exactly at 10 pm right every day so this is the cron indication here let's say you want to run it on only monday so you can put it here and then this is for month and this is for the day of month like again you can use uh cron tab guru if you want to understand more about this syntax okay and this uh, is basically in utc okay so whatever the cron schedules you are giving is it's basically in utc but yeah, there are also options that you can convert the timings to two different time zones but by default it's it will be on uh utc timing right so that's that's how you trigger it but but i'm uh, you mentioned you manually trigger it but sometimes in most of the cases let's say we want to run our different profile okay we want to pass some parameters to our test how would you pass in jenkins we will have uh those parameters set and all that right uh, we have an options where you enter your uh, inputs right but here there is also option that you can do that so if i go to the uh web test inputs the yaml again guys don't worry about this uh thing it's all here here okay you can also find it here okay so i have mentioned whenever somebody is doing a workflow dispatch that means manually triggering it I want to use some inputs here okay uh, i want to ask for certain inputs from the user first uh, 
ask the input like maven profile okay and then some people might not really understand what is maven profile like they don't know what are the different options available so you can put a description clearly indicating what are the different available options and then whether this is a mandatory parameter or not yeah otherwise it won't run so it is a mandatory parameter you have to give it let's say if it is an optional parameter then you can use false okay so based upon your requirement you can change it to over false if they are not choosing anything then then it will use a default one of web right uh same way remote url uh selenoid url if posted outside uh if it is required one otherwise it will consider the one that is by default yeah so this is how you can give it let's go and check let's try to um, go to the actions tab and see how this looks like in the ui so schedule web tests provide inputs to workflow and when i click on this run workflow it is asking me hey which which branch you want to pick for for running this uh, workflow i want to pick the master branch and what are the, so choose the maven profile like web or android or ios whatever choose one of the option here so i want to choose or run my android test you can use android you can choose web and by default if you notice the default values that we have mentioned there uh, is is displayed here so you can give all these things and click on run workflow so it will use these inputs uh, and then in in their code so how it uses so if you go down uh, so we have indicated so maven clean test right and then for profile hyphen p but this input is is coming from the user input so you have to define it here so maybe i will take and help from the chrome because it will be much more easy to understand uh, in one single place so if you notice uh, github dot even dot inputs dot maven profile which means so whatever the github uh, variables that we want to refer we have to use github and the dollar curly braces indicates this is a variable okay this will be replaced by the real value okay so this is how we use variable in 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 github workflow okay and we mentioned github and this is an event right this is an event trigger so i told this is a, a kind of event right trigger event and from there this is an input section right from the input section i want to get the maven profile so that's one what are the input that the user is giving for this maven profile it will be replaced here at the runtime so that's how it is and same way for remote url this will be used at the runtime so that is inputs dot remote url will be used at the runtime so if, if they don't give it it will take the default values okay let's you, you can also trigger this workflow and see how this works right let's quickly do it so let's uh run this one by default i'll use the default ones and click on run workflow and let's see the magic how it gets replaced at the runtime and the, now the workflow is started so click on here So now it's setting up the job. It's, it's setting up the selenite to run our web test, right? It takes a little bit of time. But look, 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 it's how easy it is. Like there is nothing much to explain here. It's it's self-explanatory, right? Uh, all these things, for example, uh, this is pretty understandable push run it only when there is a push happening to these branches and there is a pull request happening with these types right very very simple and easy to understand it's not really complicated stuff and now when you try to run the test uh, we can easily check what's happening there so if you notice hyphen p web because this is the input that we passed right so remember uh, this is the uh, default input that we passed default input that we passed same way it used a local host double four double four for the remote url so that's how you also replace uh, variables with value right you take the inputs from the user and use it in your uh, you know command right so it's as simple as that so we will uh, cover some of the other interesting topics in the uh, next video uh, where i will be going through the jobs build and what are the different steps and how we have to arrange them uh, how how you can execute multiple jobs parallelly and all that so keep watching keep supporting testing many bytes uh, if you like this please do share it with your friends uh, thanks guys um, bye bye